Okay, we got this Maytag Centennial right here. You might have seen one. You might have one. Here's the model on it. But there's a bunch of different models. They're all the same junk, you know. Right here, you got your lid lock. One of the main problems with them is this lid lock will go out. You order your new one for $40, $50, $30, $20, whatever you can find at Amazon cheap. Or you buy from Sears or something for $50. Go ahead and change them out if that's your problem. But this time I had a sensing and lid lock flash, which I thought it was a lid lock again. I bypassed it. That didn't fix it. It would do everything but spin. So I went ahead and took everything apart. There's a capacitor. The capacitor is 50 microfarads. It only read 23, so I ordered another one, which read 50. That didn't solve the problem because I guess this motor was draining the capacitor down anyway. Changed this actuator. This kind of shifts it in and out of gear. Tell it to spin, stop, and everything else. So, thought that might have been the problem. That wasn't it either. And the only really other components I could change was this motor or this control panel, timer, whatever the hell you want to call it. And... The control panel is 150 to 200 bucks, and the motor is 170 or something like that. So, if you're gonna spend 170 or 200 bucks, you just assume buy a new washing machine if they're four, five, six hundred dollars. You find you a good one on sale. The only thing I really didn't change, you know, these pulleys are good and everything, and everything turns. I didn't change this. Took it off, it's like a counterweight, I guess. It's just a block of metal. Maybe if I change that, it might have fixed it. You know, you change that block of metal and it gotta work. Who knows? But anyway, so here, here's my, and here's a pump. The pump that come off of there. I checked everything out, wasn't nothing stuck in there. So it had nothing to do with it. Sometimes if you got a pump connected to your motor and you get like a, a screw or something jammed in there to stop it from spinning. But, um. Got it all taken apart so I can show you guys the best way to fix these things. Well, you come over to your little chart here, and it tells you you turn your knob, you know, left, right, right, left, right. You know, like you're doing some kind of walking thing. And the hell these old people come and look for me for? I don't know. Some old people looking at my house. Maybe they want to buy it from me so I can move. But, um... Air condition, air condition. Yeah, now he's trying to come ask me to do his sewage. Better watch out, don't do no sewage work. Could fix your air condition for you maybe. But anyway, so you come on, you look through this here and tells you the different little things. And once you do it, all these lights will light up right here. And then you come and there's different test modes you can try out. and. You can put it into a, a thing that'll show you the codes and errors and once you do that it'll have different lights that'll light up a flash and then you come here and you find the corresponding numbers okay two one two uh you know I, I don't know if that means flashes or if the fourth button is lit and the last one on this side i don't know it's not very descriptive on all that you know so i kind of looked at it and it just tells you, okay, you have a fault in, in the speed of the spin, okay? That doesn't really tell you how to fix it, but okay. So anyway, so you, you play around that for a couple of hours and come up with nothing, but the, the only really thing you can do, okay? So you come and you get your little voltmeter out. Hold me to you. Give me one second. Let me plug it in. You see, I'm not prepared today. People throwing me off. All right. Get your volt meter. You put it on volts, alternating current. You don't want direct current. All right. So what you're gonna have to do first is you're gonna pull this little button off. All right. And you're gonna put one tab here in the hole. 